So let's talk about how to claim your Google Places listing and some best practices. When you, when you go in and claim your Google Places listing, it gives you the option to list your company name. And one best practice as it relates to, to doing that is you want to only list your true legal name. So you don't want to list, you know, Pete's Plumbing and Heating in Tampa, Florida. That's adding information. You only want to put your company name there. So just Pete's Plumbing and Heating, if that's your company name, if that's how it's listed online, if that's how you incorporated your organization, that's the way you want to do it. Don't ever add additional keywords here. There's some outdated information online that would indicate, hey, why don't you just add your city in there? That will give you some more authenticity and it will help you to show up more often. Bad strategy is actually against Google's uh, policies and procedures, so you don't want to play that game. You don't want to do that. Then you're going to have the option to add your website address. Obviously, you want to put your address in there. Your website address creates a nice inbound link. It also helps your consumer, your potential customer, to be able to go and get that additional information. You always want to use a local number. Don't use an 800 number. As a matter of fact, 800 numbers don't rank very well. I rarely see in plumbing and HVAC companies with an 800 number ranked. The reason for that is it's called Google Plus Local, and it's specifically meant for local businesses. So the connotation behind an 800 number is, oh, well, you know, I'm in Tampa and you're in some other state. You're in San Diego, and if I dial this 800 number, I won't be incurring a charge. Don't do it. It doesn't rank well. Plus, statistics tell us that uh, local numbers actually rank better. I mean, convert better. That if a, if a customer gets to your HVAC website and they're reading about who you are and what you do, and you've got a local number, they're more apt to call that local number than an 800 number. Another best practice is you need to use a local address in your Google Places listing. It's not going to work to use a P.O. box or a UPS store. There was a time you know where you could do that. It, it really just doesn't work as well. Google's privy to that. There were some guys that were teaching you to in every little city that you wanted to rank in, go out and set up a UPS box store and claim your listing in those different areas. Um, for the most part, the companies I've seen that have done that in the past are now blackballed. They can't even rank in their main city. Uh, so don't try and play that game. Use your real business address. And if it's a house, that's fine. You can get away with using a home address because there are businesses that happen to operate out of a home. You just need to play by the rules. And so one of the rules that Google dictates is as you go through the process of claiming your Google Places listing, it asks, do you service customers at your place of business? In other words, do they come to you like at a, at a store, at a dentist, or are you servicing them out in the field? And it's a yes-no question. So you obviously need to answer that. Um, no, we don't service them at our place of business. We go out to them. Then the next question that it asks once you say yes or no to that is it says, it asks if you want to show your address or not. And so you have the option at that point to either say, yes, please show my address or don't show my address. If you work from a home office, you can hit, no, please don't show my address because you shouldn't show your address. Actually, Google mandates that if you work from a home office, you should not be showing your address because you don't want people using the Google map to find you and come to your house. So you need to put no there. You can still rank. We have clients that rank quite well on the Google map from a home address with a hidden address. So, you know, play by the rules. Use your real address. Hide the address if it's a home office. And then if you don't have a physical address and you can't list your home office, the other option is a virtual office is a worst case scenario. And a virtual office is just, you know, those uh, office buildings that will rent you a suite within their, uh, within their building. And maybe you don't actually work there, but you have access to mail and you've got somebody that answers the phones for you there. Uh, you can usually get a, a virtual office at a relatively cheap rate. And that's an option for you to be able to at least establish yourself on the map and have a place of business because you're going to have to verify via phone. The next thing you want to do within Google Places is upload photos. And you want to upload as much content as possible. And so Google allows you to upload up to 10 pictures and up to 5 videos. So on the, on the pictures, 
upload upload 10 pictures and try and make them as authentic as possible. And by that I mean don't just don't just grab stock photography, you know, the picture of the guy with the wrench and um, and a picture of the AC unit. The the more authentic the photos, the pictures, the real pictures of you and your team of guys and your trucks, you know, stacked in order and the building and, you know, your guys out in the field with a wrench in front of a train AC unit, for instance. But that type of stuff re resonates well. It works well. You want to do that. You want to upload videos, too. It's very, very simple to create a YouTube channel, make a simple video, either from an iPhone or, uh, you know, a little mobile mobile um, video camera, and just a, a brief video, you know, maybe a picture of your truck, a picture of, you know, a scanning picture of your truck, a scanning picture of your team, and then you standing in front of the camera and saying, hey, I'm the owner of, you know, Pete's Plumbing and Heating, and we provide AC installation repair services to this specific area, kind of talk about, you know, your unique selling proposition, and, and that's it. You know, save that, upload it to YouTube, sync it to your uh, Google Places listing, and that resonates well, too. I mean, the more authentic information like that that you can put out, the better. Just some, some additional tips on what you can do with, with video and, and, and your pictures is, first of all, your, your images, name them something specific. So don't just name it image one, image two, image three, or use the default that your camera spits out for the image. Name it your city plus AC repair dash your company name. And... AC repair dash your city and then company name. That way you're getting some keyword context into your images. Another really kind of best practice as far as how you can leverage your, your images and get more context to it is to use a tool like Panoramio. And Panoramio, and you can go to panoramio.com, is a image sharing site. And what you can do is you can upload an image to panoramio.com and then you can name it like I just said. But then you can also geotag it. So you can put your company's address in the settings on the image. And now Google says, whenever it, you know, whenever you've uploaded it to YouTube, Google spiders to your um, to your Google Places listing, follows that image off to Panoramio, sees the GPS information, follows that GPS information back to your map listing, and it gives a lot of context and a lot of um, you know authority information that would say, okay, this is a real company that's operating in this area. Um, and it really helps with, with all of that. And so those are some really good best practices on how you can optimize your Google Places listing. One thing to pay close attention to is if you haven't claimed your Google Places listing and you're doing this for the first time, you're going to get the option to either verify via phone or verify via mail. So if you haven't claimed your Google Places listing and you've been in business for some period of time, it's going to give you that option to verify via phone. Where that's, op where that's available, you'll always want to do it. So you select verify via phone. When you press submit, you'll get a call almost immediately. And it will be an automated system that says, hey, this is Google. Your PIN code is 44632. And you write that down, enter it in your Google Places listing at google.com slash places, and you're cooking with greets. You can go in and follow all of those best practices I just recommend. recommended. If you haven't done that yet and you're starting a brand new business, you might not have the option to verify via phone. And what's going to happen is it it will say, well, we're going to send you a postcard. And you got to wait a few days, something like 10 business days. You'll get a postcard in the mail with your PIN code, and that's how you complete the verification process. Well, I hope you found this information beneficial. I hope you're able to take these ideas and techniques and start to implement them in your business in a way that's going to help you connect with more customers and grow your business. If you'd like to get more ideas, techniques, strategies, tips on how you can more effectively market your AC repair, HVAC business online, um, I'd encourage you to go to hvacseo.net slash free. Uh, there you'll be able to download our guide. It takes you step by step through really some of the best ideas, techniques, and strategies that we've developed uh, specifically for the HVAC business, uh, ranging from everything from SEO to Google Places optimization to yeah, email marketing and social media. So I encourage you to go ahead and uh, download that guide. It's completely free of charge. Now, if you're the type of business owner that says, hey, you know, this is great information, uh, I'd be interested in potentially having you guys do this for us. We'd love the opportunity to talk with you. You can give us a call directly at 866-610-4647.